Hey guys, Mike here. So for those who stayed to the end of the video yesterday, what do we talk about? What's the trend? Huge red day equals huge green day the next day. The pattern still holds true until it does not. Okay, so we got another one like that. And I'm gonna go over something today that Tom Lee put out, because I was actually doing an update on this anyway, and just so happened he put this out here today, about there's something that's not happening, which would really surprise. I think when I show this to you, it'll really surprise you, because remember, we've already eclipsed 2021 highs, right? We're at all-time highs, new all-time highs. And to do that, you would think there would be a lot more risk being taken on to push us to that point, would you not? And so I'm going to show you something that really might surprise you in a point he made, which could be true, may not be, but it, it kind of makes sense in a way. And, and then we'll go into, because a lot of people, and I get it, this question a lot, man, whether it's DMs, emails, in the comments, it's like, you know, why in the world, we, we got to be having a sell-off, we're overextended, all this stuff. And look, like I told the members, I'm going give, to give you three stocks. Watch three, three stocks, and I'll give you the reason why. It's all you got to watch to know where the market's going. It's just that simple, okay? So I'm going to give that to you. And when we look at this, first of all, I just want to start by saying, can you imagine this right here? Imagine being able to sell $4 billion of your stock in four trading days, and that right there is nothing but pennies. I mean, not even quarters, pennies to you, because the man's worth $194 billion now that Amazon has ran up. All right, he's actually increased by like 70 billion over the last two months, I believe. And so just imagine that. I mean, put in the comments, what's the largest amount of stock dollar-wise you have sold in a four-day period? All right, I mean, I think mine probably in a four-day period was maybe maybe 45K, if I remember correctly. I mean, something like that. But imagine selling $4 billion worth in four days, and it's just nothing but pennies. <laughs> You know, not that he did. He's, he's like, come here, uh, you sell that for me. You know, but that, isn't, that, isn't that just amazing? Can you imagine? That, mean, that means he was, I even looked it up today. It's like the top seven richest Americans are worth a trillion dollars. Isn't that amazing to see? Oh, one trillion dollars, seven people in this country. Woo, boy. Man, that's, that's unbelievable. I would just like to like have one day to just follow them around to see how that lifestyle is. Because let's be real. You, you know, you, you can be a millionaire. You ain't touching that. That that right there, that is like, you know, Chris Rock said, being rich, you, you can lose that on a drunken field stupor in Vegas in one weekend. Being wealthy, can't lose that. Now, this is what Tom Lee was talking about. He says, too much cash on sidelines means the stock market hasn't peaked. And what he's talking about is not so much this cash, but he's talking about margin, right? A lot of dry power on the sidelines. Buying power needs to be exhausting. This was behind the July 2023 top. By comparison, there's still a low level of New York Stock Exchange, New York Stock Exchange margin debt. These figures need to surge to a near top, is what he thinks it is. And then, of course, this is his chart right here. There's different sources for this, different kind of margin debt we're talking about here. But he said he's getting his from Fender, and he said in October, you know, it was around 935 billion. In July of 2023, it was around 710, and now it's sitting around 700 billion according to his chart. So there's still a lot out there. And you would think that we would have already eclipsed the 935 billion to push us to new all-time highs, right? But even when you look over uh, at this source right here, you can see this one's dealing with brokers slash dealers and the debit balances in the margin accounts. And you can see where we're at, which is kind of stunning, right? This is in uh, dollar wise. We're still way down here. I mean, we hadn't even come up to the zero line across that yet. And you would think we'd be way higher than that, right? I mean, as you can see during the peaks, what they were pushing us up to in billions wise, right? And when you look at this, I mean, you got to think back going all the way to 2000 in the levels we were at, there was kind of like your peaks right there, right? And we're still down here, which is just, and you got to ask yourself this, like how much margin are you using compared to what you were using back like 2020 and 2021, right? That's really the big questions, right? Because I think, I mean, I mean, I know I'm not using much margin anywhere near. And so, you know, I'm curious to know what you think. Even if you look at percentage wise, what the increase has been and stuff, and it's really just not that big of an increase. You know, I think if I had to really say this was, let's say it's updated through, I don't know, probably December is what I guess is updated through. You know, you're looking, that's very low, right? Even percentage increase. But because a lot of people don't believe in the rally, a lot of cash on the sidelines versus. Uh, having to use margin now because remember we had to build up the cash right by going through 2020 2021 and so let me know you know what you think about what he's saying like do we have to top out or increase the risk 
And the reason why I say that, which is funny. And guys, before we continue, if you could hit that like button for me, I sure would appreciate it. It helps people find this video and everything. And also, if you like the content, think about subscribing, guys. It's because when you look at the market right now, look what's happening today, this week. Bitcoin's going through the roof. Crypto miners going through the roof. Crap coins are starting to take off like crazy, right? You're sitting here with even garbage AI stocks. And I mean, AI stocks that uh, companies that will never monetize AI. They just put the AI in their name or they talk crap on the earnings calls, which have never you know, meant anything. You see in their earnings, they're not monetizing anything like NVIDIA or AMD or uh, even Meta in them, right? Nothing, okay? Even they're up just this week, 20, 30%. All right, that, so I'm looking at that going, man, it seems like there's risk going to me, but people just aren't using margin. They're having more cash just flow back into the reinvested and coming off the sidelines and stuff. And so- and that was two different sources you saw there. So again, you're talking about hundreds of billions that could be used in margin to continue to push this up. And it'll be interesting to see, like, yes, if we get a pullback, uh, will that come back into play or not? So again, let us know in the comments. Are you using as much margin as you used to use, or is it less now, right? And what do you have you talked to your friends about it? What are they doing, right? But when you look overall before we get in those three stocks, I mean, obviously the S and P, you know, again, you got to pull out on perspective when you have a big red day, right? It's still sitting above the five-day moving average. You can see it regain that, heading back up to the top of that trend line. Like I said, all it did was fall back down that channel. Okay, after going up to this, and this is the trend line to really watch if you're going to break above it. This one has been going on for well over a year now, like a year and four months or something. It's held true so far. That's where we rejected from uh, when we got that sell-off. But again, we're still setting this channel. When you look over the QQQ, again, this one is right at the five-day moving average. It didn't turn up yet on the daily, but... Again, big move up today. I expect this will probably end up happening. It's still within the weekly range. This is another one that has a trend line. goes back to the beginning of 2023, which is respected. And so this is what it's broke above. And now it's just kind of sitting right on top of it right there. So again, watch that kind of stuff when you're looking at this. Now, looking at these three stocks, if you're really one of these people that you want to sell off and you're like, man, I got my money waiting or my margin waiting, whatever it is, you need first Apple, right? It's setting to the 200 moving average. Again, this one right here, the MACD is below the zero line. It still has that trend line, which is respected. There's been multiple hits off of it to save it, right? Even if it does break the 200. And it's done this play before, right? Again, you got support sitting right there, around like 180 ish uh, as well. But that has to break first, right? And when you look on the daily, I mean, you can see, have we been getting lower highs? Sure, sure have. But there's not a lower low here yet, right? So you kind of were getting that, then it stopped. And so we got to see, is it going to set another lower low, which means it will have to break that trend line. As you saw over here, yeah, we were getting that going on, hit the trend line, boom, bounced, right? And so that's going to be the key question. Again, Apple is one of the generals that has to fall. I'll explain why in just a second. Microsoft, here's another general that would have to fall and show a lot of weakness. You, again, on the daily MACD, sure, it's showing a bearish you know, MACD cross right there. And what you're really looking at, if it does start to sell down, is that 100 moving average would be your target, right? Why? Because it really respects the 100 when it does these sell-offs. It's done it multiple times. If you go back through the Microsoft chart, you'll see it bounce many times, whether it's, getting, it's bouncing off of it or if it was coming up, getting rejected off of it. So it really does like the 100 moving average. And so that will be a good target if that is the case. That will put a sell-off over 10% on Microsoft and Apple. The other general which you have to end up taking out is going to be NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA. Why would NVIDIA be one of those three? And I think we all know why. Because it's the AI king, right? You take out the king. If the king falls, then all the other AI stocks will follow easily because this is the one that's monetized the most when it comes to the AI play, right? And the first thing you're going to be looking for, obviously, there's big support there. First is going to be that trend line right there, around 645, 650, depending on when it would hit it. If it falls down that channel, obviously, I don't think the moving average will probably stop it. So it'll be the bottom of that channel. And so, again, this is another one that you're looking at. You say, okay, and you can say, I mean, that MACD, oof, I think it's just been climbing, hadn't it? And if we go to a weekly, which I'm not, it's just straight up. And so, you know, a lot of people were picking out, oh, maybe it's going to be the earnings day. It shows weakness or is it good, just going to crush it again, right? And so if it hangs the moon again, they can continue to push this one up. Uh, if not, then you get yourself. But you have to take out those three stocks because two of them are just comfort for all the big hedge funds and everybody else to buy into because they, you know, they're, they have so much cash on hand. They buy so much stock back, all that good stuff. And again, the other one is just the AI king. That's the way it is until that one falls. 
all the other AI stocks are going to just continue to hold up. But you take those three down or those three start to show a lot of weakness, then the other the market will fall with it. That's just the way it is. And I don't mean crash or anything. I mean literally 5 to 10% is what I'm talking about from the indexes, which is a lot more for the stocks, of course. But, you know, that's what has to happen. Until then, you know, it, it's all for nothing. I'm just being honest about it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments on that. Now, IWM, obviously another big move up today. Still within this weekly range. And a lot of people said, oh, we fell below the weekly range. What's going to happen? Well, it popped right back up. Shocker, right? Then all I did was bounce right off that little trend line right there, which was that, that little uh, wedge it was in. And so, you know, this one, again, above the five-day moving average, which is a good thing to see in it. It is, again, everything's risk on. I should have added this to the crypto and stuff, but it's amazing how we're pushing out rate cuts and the stuff that's rate cut sensitive is going up, like an in phase, small caps, all this other stuff, right? Uh, which is kind of amazing to see. But when you look at this one, obviously, you know, you can see we're in this volume gap. That's one reason you're getting these moves right here. And, it, it can, and again, if we can just break above, it'll be like 200-ish right there. Then this thing could finally move out of that range and move all the way up. But, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how they're going to handle this with OpEx. And all of a sudden, all these rate cuts aren't going to happen anymore. Blah, 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 all that good stuff. And so watch that one. I still find it, it just seems fishy to me that small caps of them are just blasting off like that. But you've seen what? Huge swings in it, Okay. Now, Tesla, again, I'm still watching this inverse head and shoulders right here. Uh, had a you know decent day today, still weaker than the other Max 7, that is for sure. That is no joke. It's happening. It really needs a catalyst more than anything else and no more price cuts and stuff like that. You kind of see it on the daily. The you know the good news is you, you still got, you see that momentum down the bottom with that histogram? I mean, it's just, God, it's so small. Look at the other parts of the histogram, right? And you see a lot more momentum. It's just not a ton of momentum. It just needs a catalyst or something. The good news was it was number one for the most bullish when it comes to uh, flow, uh, call flow right here. So, you know, 50 million in premium, not a lot for Tesla, to be honest with you, but it was still number one. And so we'll see if that continues. If it does, then you should see Tesla move up. Now, earnings tomorrow, you know, you get Crocs, John Deere, Yeti. Watch out for that one as well. What the heck? Wendy's. Uh, the high beta stuff in the afternoon, though. DraftKings, Coinbase, Roku, uh, Trade Desk, Applied Materials. DoorDash and Open Door, which is a real estate company. And then when you go over to the data, you're going to have jobless claims coming out. Uh, so we'll see if they're going to be hot or not. Uh, and then you'll have a lot of manufacturing data, which the market still does not care about at all. Philadelphia new orders will be interesting. And then retail sales month over month, year over year. Uh, so a lot of industrial data coming out, manufacturing all before the market opens. So that's going to be interesting to see. And then you'll have a lot of Fed speakers uh, coming out, talking again. They're all kind of saying the same thing right now, which is we're data dependent and we'll see what happens. Uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll see, you know, <laughs> again, if you're playing earnings, by the way, because I know a lot of people just the yellow calls, whatever it is, go look up the expected move. I think this is a big thing and see how often it beats or it doesn't beat it. Because if you're buying just straight up calls or puts, you're most likely going to get crushed, right? If it doesn't hit the expected move. And, and this is where you see the funny stuff in after hours, like in a firm, for example, which sold way down and it met the expected move. But what happened after hours? They pushed it all the way up before the market opened, right? And so you, you were screwed unless you were actually selling and buying in, in the after hours uh, market and stuff. So just kind of figured I'd put that there to you. Keep that in mind if you're playing uh, lottery stuff and everything. So, uh, and we'll see if there's any other semi stocks that people were uh, going to push up. Because again, I forgot to mention, like SMCI, I think this is the stock that that one's still, you know, getting pushed up and up and up and up and up. So, you know, I mean, the price of that stock's over uh, Nvidia at this point in time. Because uh, I know somebody explained this to me, and I, I still got to verify this. But let me know in the comments if you know the story of this. Like, some group actually owns so much of the stocks so that wasn't a much, that much available, which is why you don't see it dropping yet, right? It just keeps gapping up every day and just keeps going and going and going. So I'm not saying it's a GameStop type thing, but it's, it's kind of similar in a way. They're just not doing it with options, I don't think. But anyway, I got to look into that one and study that one a little more. So let me know uh, in the comments. Feel free to educate us on that. So hope you guys got something out of it. Hit that like and subscribe button. We'll see if tomorrow is going to be red or green. Because what are we going? We went, was it red Monday? No, green Monday, Tuesday red. Today, green, we'll see if we're alternating, right? Because remember, we got the op coming up on Friday. So anyway, have a good one, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.